Hey guys, welcome back to Be Good People. This is Curtis. Hey. And I'm Luke. And uh, we're, we've been working through um, the chapters of a book called Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. And the whole book, it opens up on the story of Sandra Bland in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, um, white cop, uh, black female driver, um, has an altercation. She ends up committing suicide. Uh, three mm-hmm. days later and the, the whole premise he sets that up just at the beginning and he gets back to it at the end and we're going to be talking about that in the future uh, mm-hmm. when we get there but but he sets that up and he he's basically saying how do two reasonable people walk into a situation um, and then all of a sudden they don't know each other and all of a sudden it gets escalated and mm-hmm. so we've been talking about that what is it like talking to strangers and Curtis and I, you know, we started this podcast really on the idea of like, let's have some good conversations, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, we've been talking about like, you know, the title of the show is Be Good People. We're not, we're not trying to teach you guys what it, how you can be good people, but rather like, what, what do we do to make us better people? And, and Luke had shared this book with me and, you know, it took me a while to read it, but, uh, or to get around to reading it. And I finally did. And I was like, hey, we should we should, you know, deconstruct this on, on the show and, and see yeah. what that looks like. And it just so happened to uh, coincide with a lot of relevant issues that are happening now. So uh, we might dive into that near the end, but like today, uh, the, the, um, the section of the book, and it's, I guess the next to last section, and it's called lessons. And so what's the lesson we can learn. And it's, it's a great part of the book and it goes through uh a few things, but it starts off with, with the uh, KSM and do you remember who that is? Luke? Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Yeah. What yeah. they call him? Uh, oh, Mukhtar? Mukhtar. Mukhtar. Yeah. Mukhtar means uh, like the brains the, or the, the brain. Yeah. yeah the brain. genius behind it or whatever. Yeah. That's what it actually means. Yeah. 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 And I think that's actually, uh, if I remember right in the book, they referenced it. He actually asked interrogators to refer to him as that. Well, it um, wasn't even that. It was in the court proceedings. He was like, you got the name wrong. Like, you got to refer to me as this. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> yeah, so it looks at that. And, you know, and if you can rewind back to those times, I, and I feel like it's almost so much has happened in our country since, you know what I mean? Like, there seems to be always a disaster or something emotionally yeah. charged that happens it takes our mind off of it but if you look back to you know ksm if you look back to 9-11 bombings and our search oh, yeah. for terrorists from that point on ksm mm-hmm. is a part of that he was one of the biggest yeah he was one of the big planners in the 9-11 bombings. right yeah um, and mm-hmm. he was one of the highly valued targets yeah you know what whatever he, he was he was not a foot soldier he was no no, no. they made yeah. playing cards for him yeah yeah you know what when, i mean the yeah the top top targets um this is who we're looking for and they caught him. Yeah. And, um, and so during this time, there was a lot of debate about how are we interrogating um, people? How are we treating people in interrogation mm-hmm. to get to the truth? And so a lot of people were anti um, what they were calling torture at the time. I think um, what we called it to make us sleep well at night was um, enhanced was interrogation. Enhanced interrogation yeah. is what we called it. Yeah. And, but the other thing we did too, because that's not allowed on U.S. soil, we did the interrogation on what we call black sites in other countries. Um, that's where Guantanamo Bay came from. Yeah, like a holding a, facility. Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so, so that's what's going on. And it's, it's, we have to rewind a little bit with our minds and remember what that discussion was like. But yeah. there was a lot of discussion over we should not be using these tactics. And then Mm -hmm. arguments from the other side saying, no, these tactics are how we get to information. This is how we keep Americans safe. Yeah. Yeah. He introduces us to KSM and then he uh, immediately switches over to uh, Fort Bragg where uh, they had, uh, there was a a psychologist on board and, and, and they did these experiments on like green berets, like the top, top of the top, most, you know, bad dudes and and women that you'll ever (laughs) if we if we if we can interrogate them we can interrogate anybody yeah yeah and and it was for the the purpose of uh when they brought him there the the psychiatrist um uh you know he said it looked like a like an internment camp it looked like a concentration camp and these people were brought there during the day and then they left during the night 
and they were, you know, doing these three uh, tactics, which was the walling, which is where uh, it's basically like a wrestling mat on the wall. And so they'll throw you up against it and it gives, and you're not damaging your head, but like there's a lot in there to make a big sound, make it feel psychologically like that you, you know, just yeah, got like it was a big hit. Shock you out of it. Yeah. And then uh, waterboarding, which I think everyone, everyone knows waterboarding. That was a popular one. Yeah. And then I think sleep- that was the one, uh, if I remember right, George Bush talked about, yeah, that sounds a lot like what happened to me in the, in the fraternity I was in in college. <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty sure that's, you know, with, yeah, with the good old W. With, with the uh, beer funnels, yeah, all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> Very similar to what I've, I've dealt with, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that as a, a kid in Harvard. <laughs> God love Bush. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and then what was the third one? Sleep deprivation, which was the uh, – I, I didn't know much about the, the walling, but yeah. nonstop you hear about the waterboarding. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the and sleep deprivation, I thought, was had been in the arsenal for a while, but apparently yeah. it was being studied. I guess maybe. Well, yeah, to, and well, they had been to doing, the Geneva Convention Code. Well, in the, and in wasn't it the late eighties or mid eighties or something like that? They started using like hard metal with a uh, with yeah. um, cultures that were not okay with that style of music. Yeah. They were using that to intimidate. At one people. point, I think they were using like Justin Bieber music. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. like pop music, you know, mm-hmm. for some of these guys that, you know, the music skill, the yeah. two cultures just clash, you know. Yeah, especially with the messaging of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, they were testing this stuff at Fort Bragg, trying mm-hmm. to figure out what worked, and what were the results? Yeah. Charles Morgan, that was his name. He, yeah. was, he was trying to study PTSD. Yeah. And uh, he, came, he came to a, uh, a roadblock where – to have these experiments, you need a control group that like are normal and then they go through trauma and then some of them have PTSD and some of them don't. He was trying to figure out why some soldiers, you know, suffer from it and some don't, but he couldn't find a good control group. And he joked around that uh, this was like the most like 1950s joke I've ever heard uh, out of the book. But he was like, I made a joke. The only way I could do that was to find uh, people before they got married. (laughs) Uh, I had to pause and just walk away. I was like, you know what? That's enough for right How'd now. How'd that make it through an editor or two? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there was a colonel who was like, you know what? Come to Fort Bragg with me. So, you know, a lot of this was his research and what he published. And uh, his thought was, okay, cool. Um, you know, we've got this simulated trauma, but yeah. these guys know that they get to go home at the end of the day. They get yeah. to have a beer uh, at the bar afterwards with their soldier, uh, soldier buddies or with their friends yeah. or whatever, you know, like how does this induce trauma? So he started doing tests on like, you know, their cortisol levels and all that other stuff and, and found that they came to the same level as people who were actually like in a fight or yeah. were like under fire, like the, just the simulation of it raised those levels in our, you know, the chemicals in our brain. So these people were actually experiencing it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so you see that that's kind of where they were experiencing it. They were getting, they were, it was inducing fear. It was inducing trauma in their life. Um, and so I don't know from that, cause he was talking about too, was this the same section where he was talking about the actual interrogators go through? Yeah. 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 That was they, it. And, and, they, he played a clip of Cheney saying like, Hey, our guys have gone through this and it's proven yep. effective. Like these are the guys that, are, that he's talking about. Yeah. And one of the guys, one of the top interrogators with KSM mm-hmm. even said, no, part of training is you, you have to go through all of these things. Right. Yeah. He had said like they had put him in a barrel and buried it with just yep. his head up and yep. with the water rising. And so that's in his brain, but he didn't know that they had tubes that would like, filter or you know level it yeah. off before it got to his nose yeah he wasn't and, going to die but he didn't know and, that yeah. well yeah he, he was he even said like in my mind i i knew that well they're not going to kill you know some psychologist yeah. in in an army camp and but then there was this sneaky suspicion it was like but i don't know man i, I, I yeah there there wasn't a hundred percent certainty and i think yeah. that you know that one percent or however much it looks like in these people's brains that, you know, I've never experienced it. So I can't really talk to yeah. it. Just hearing from these guys, like that was enough to raise their, 
you know, cognitive level to where they're like, we're in danger right now. You know, those, yeah. those, those, uh, those pistons are firing in the brain. Yeah. It's like, Hey, stuff's going down right now. Yeah. And so we see this training for all this stuff and we see the effects it has in people's lives and what it causes them to do. And so we have KSM in a black site somewhere and enhanced interrogation start happening on him, and he doesn't care. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, well, really, it, right? Yeah. Uh, so he had something weird. The, the interrogator was saying that something was going on where he had like trained himself or he just had something, uh, I don't know, genetically with him where he yeah. could open up his sinuses and the water just like filtered through. <laughs> like it was, yeah. so waterboarding it was didn't ineffective. Work. Yeah. The, yeah. the one of the three that was a hundred percent effective was like, no, he, yeah. at one point he said the guy was, uh, he knew that you could only go 40 seconds and he was counting his head. So like at 35 seconds, he'd hold his hand up and like, you know, and count start it down and down. Yeah. Cut it off. And so they leave the room to like, discuss like hey man what are we gonna do like this guy's killing us and they come back in the room and he's snoring like he's just so at pace, like, <laughs> he's falling asleep this was not traumatic can't. for him yeah but the point was that like this guy's never gonna see the light of day and yeah. he knew that he and he help. and here's an uh an intersection of like two strangers coming to talk and one has valuable information that he has no reason to give up yeah. and you have another group that will do anything to get that information by any means necessary. And so they might go the wrong way. You know, there were some psychologists that like with the walling and the sleep deprivation, they were doing some studies and it was showing how like, if, if you are uh, uh, like adults, um, uh, you know, have went through puberty, you know, our frontal cortex yeah. has developed to the point where we, we see the depth, you know, we can see, uh, Hey, I don't want to do this because 10 years down the road or five years down the road, or, you know, we've got long-term thought, we've got depth, perception of where we are and we can see the backgrounds and stuff. So they did these drawing experiments where you have two colors or two pins and the adults will, if you ask them to look at something and draw it, they'll draw the background with the first pin and just get yeah. it all out there. And then they, they give you the second pin and then you fill in the little details with kids. It's like, it's just, you know, the same picture, one's in blue and one's in pink. You know, they see yeah. everything just on the surface level. Yeah, and they work, they work the whole picture from one side to the other. With right, all exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. all, just one big blob of information. Yeah. There's no, like, there's no details in there. There's no, like, you know, fine-tuning with anything. But after these experiments, uh, after these enhanced uh, interrogations or torture, whatever you want to call it, like, yeah the guys who were going through that, going through that test, they were reverting back to that just blob of information. Yeah. And these yeah. are the, these are the green berets. These are the seals, yeah. you know, these are the guys who are trained to be where they're not supposed to be. Look at that information and, and come back and copy it, you know, yeah. like, so under these stressful situations, uh, our, <laughs> our, our ability cortex yeah. is, you know, it's, it's rendered yeah. kind of useless back well, our, to like our ability to, recall memory our ability to recall detail yeah um, communicate those details all of yeah. that drops and yeah. so and i think that that was some of the argument at the time was hey it doesn't even work and people are like yeah. well we are getting answers and ksm yeah. finally broke i forget yeah. what it was and when he broke he admitted to being a part of everything yeah always always yeah there was some <laughs> stuff that he planned on bombing like some buildings yeah. that didn't even exist before he you yeah. know, had been captured. Been captured, yeah. So it was like, okay, so he's trying to go down as this, you know, infant. What else does he have, you know? Like, yeah. he's looking to, you know, make that scratch in history uh, with his name on it. And he's trying to build the resume. Because, I mean, it, you know, the legacy, you yeah. know, is yeah. all he was working on at that point. And so we couldn't even really trust the information he gave yeah. us 100% anyway. Yeah. And, um, and as we're talking, you know, I, I'm questioning what I questioned the first and second time I read and listened to the book was like, well, how is this useful in the Sandra yeah. Land thing? But it was it was saying that, like, in stressful situations, when people are looking for information by any means necessary and people have no incentive and no trust in you to give it, it's like yeah. this is this is a, a tug of war with two yeah. equal sides that like there's no winner on this. Yeah, they're both, like uh, and and it's usually the people who will do anything necessary to get the information they need that end up, I think one person said it, it felt like we were smacking a radio to get a bet, better signal, you yeah. know? 
yeah. like with the sleep deprivation, like these yeah. people are loopy. They're going to remember things that, that didn't happen. They, they asked a lot of these people, uh, Hey, at the end of it, who, who was the main person uh, who led these interrogations? And all these people were isolated when they chose. Um, and it was like a police lineup and they were even told, Hey, if you don't remember, say no, none of these people. Yeah. And they all pointed to this doctor who had been on vacation for yeah. like the whole time he was Wasn't in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. And he, in any court of law, that dude would be sentenced to, you know, whatever yeah. the punishment is, yeah. you know, like that's, that's clear proof. Well, but and it you was, see, and you see in the Sandra Bland story too, which again, we'll talk about in the future, but um, you had mentioned it. Um, she lights a cigarette and this yeah. is really the escalating moment in the Sandra Bland story Yeah, um, is when she is behind the wheel and she lights a cigarette with a, with the police officer. Um, uh, I'm forgetting his name. It's a uh, insignia. In, mm-hmm. Insignia. Um, the officer Insignia is standing there. Um, she lights up a cigarette and he's like, ma'am, can you please put that out? Yeah. And you had mentioned this kind of off camera before. Yeah. Um, is what is, why did she light a cigarette? Did she light a cigarette to calm down because she was in a stressful situation? Yeah. Have we put her in a stressful situation and yeah. now she's trying to find some comfort in that? Yeah. And, and, and now you're we're trying to her, take that hey, away from her? Operate in the stress. Yeah. yeah. Like, how are we saying that's a good place for an interaction? You know, yeah. like, are we going to escalate or are we going to de-escalate it? Well, and so we see uh, she's like, I don't... and. I don't want to talk about it because I know it's a few no, episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but we see that at that point forward, it escalates into stressful for both people. Yeah. And, um, and I'm sure we'll get back to that. Yeah. But, and I, I, we're make a hard shift here into the coupling. Yeah. And he, yeah, we've talked yeah. about it kind of a little bit, but not really. Um, yeah. She brings up the, the Sylvia plan. I hung up a, some posters. Yeah. 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 yeah you, you painted and hung in a mm-hmm. curtain and cut out yeah, the window. It was moved cool. near the ocean. So yeah. you know, it was a big week. Oh, so. I thought that was your pool. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so I, I don't have a lot about Sylvia. Yeah, Black well, because Sylvia, it was. The idea was looking at uh, it's, and, and it's not far from what Malcolm Gladwell has studied in Outliers, yeah. and the idea that multiple things kind of have to happen in a pattern to get the, the end result. Right, yeah. Things, and, are, and, things are not that strange. There are yeah. some outliers, but these outliers are actually explainable by a lot of situations that got so them there. Sylvia Plath killed herself uh, mm-hmm. through, um, what they call it, like community gas? Or, town or, gas, or, yeah, it's called town, town gas. gas yeah. So every, every stove had that. It's and, a form of like natural it, gas is what it was. It, it was made out of coal, and it had a large amount of carbon mono- or Yep. Carbon dioxide or monoxide. Monoxide. Carbon monoxide. monoxide. Yep. And so, like, it was a very easily accessible way mm-hmm. for – they saw a suicide spike from it, you know? Yeah. And, and – Well, and if you ever, if you, ever, ever you know, watch an old movie or you see a reference to putting your head in an oven, that's yeah, what it came that's from. Because you could turn yeah. on the gas on the oven without lighting it, so there was no right. heat involved. You would just turn it on to flow. Yeah, and then you'd put your head in there, and then just yeah. soak in the fumes, and you'd be dead yeah. in ten minutes. I yeah. mean, it was you know five. It 10 was very minutes. instant. Yeah, it was yeah. very instant. Um, your body couldn't handle it, and so. But, but he started re-examining, like they, they redid uh, the whole. Like it was dirty energy, is what they were calling yeah. it, mm-hmm. and it was costing them a lot to. And they found a new way that was more costly, mm-hmm. effective. Yeah, yeah. It didn't have the carbon monoxide in it. Yeah. And so they did it and they saw these suicide rates plummet. Yeah. And so it's, it's this idea of coupling is like, well, a poet's always gonna, you know, poets have the highest suicide rate yep. of, the, of any professor profession. And there's a lot of that stuff, but, um, which, if, which is true. That's not, yeah. that, that's not, that's not untrue, but what they, what they saw when they changed over the gas is the suicide rate dropped. Right. Because people didn't well, have easy access to yeah. what they thought. And really some of it too, when you look at, looked at another artist too at the time that they were friends with, I forget who it was. Um, she ended up killing herself with. A car. Um, yeah. The carbon monoxide from a car. Yeah. Which again, after catalytic converters, you really can't do either. And lead no, through yeah. gasoline, you can't really yeah. do it anymore. Yeah. Um, but she, uh, yeah, she did it with a car, but really what these were, were elegant, respectful ways yeah. To kill I think yourself. one of them said that like, you know, uh, it's infamous with the, uh, what's his name? Oh, gosh. Ernest Hemingway. Gonna... Ernest uh, Hemingway. You're talking Thank about you. Hemingway, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, you know, one of them had said like, you know, he, he had shot himself and they were saying I could never do that. Yeah. But know? that was appropriate for him. You're, well, I mean, um, in that, I wouldn't say appropriate, but like, no, that no, was, but I'm, I'm saying like, if you were, if Ernest Hemingway was going to choose a way to go out, that's exactly what you would expect. Right. He's a but like, man, right. But like, gun they, and, and I don't want to like, dwell on the, the suicide stuff too because mm-hmm. you know depression and all that stuff is very intricate and it's it's yeah. not an easy fix but like you hear a lot of the the saying is like you know uh if they're going to kill themselves they're going to kill themselves they brought up the golden gate bridge and putting yeah. a net under it and it was going to cost so much money and a lot of people were against it they're like these people are going to do it however they're going to find another way to kill themselves yeah if they don't, if they don't jump here they'll jump somewhere. So, so it's a it, it's just not cost effective why don't we you know invest that in uh you know uh, mental uh healing for these people or or counselors for these people or you know any any number of things but it was saying that if you take the stuff away that it it, it's not necessarily going to escalate them they might just be dissuaded from doing it you know they might i think well and i couldn't remember if it was the second lady or the sylvia plath who like had taken sleeping pills a yeah, lot. She, she had done pills before. Yeah. And like, it was a very low effective rate on, on suicide. Yeah. It's like, that. it's like a 1% or something effective rate so on, like on, it, that you die from pills. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and this was the point, I think it was, it, it connected with like, you know, the, um, Sandra Bland, you know, killing yeah. herself in jail. They were saying like, we put her in a situation where like that was easy for her to do, you know, yep. it escalated that sort of mental, uh, yeah stress or whatever if yeah <laughs> i well, i don't necessarily know that she would have done that had all the stuff not have gone down yeah and i'd like to go back to the golden gate bridge thing i mean so yeah. w- what they saw w- the response was no we can invest this money in other things we should we should yeah. pay for this net this dumb yeah. net. it'll be an eyesore too but let's yeah yeah i think that was a big thing was like it was an yeah. eyesore it's an eyesore and it wouldn't be effective like uh, you know people will just kill themselves somewhere else that's the yeah argument. and so what we see is um them not doing that. But during this time, so during like the 80 years or whatever that it has passed, yeah, they have installed a bike lane so that less bikes, so that yeah. a, bike, a person biking won't be hit by a car and careen off the bridge. Right. Even though less, and it, it costs more to do that. It costs way more to pe- do that. Less people have died from bikes being hit by cars yeah. than like, people have jumped off the bridge. Yeah, like yeah, a exactly. crazy low number. Like it was, and I, I think it's because the bike lane is kind of sexy, and the yeah. the the net kind of shows us, hey, you know what, we do have a suicide problem yeah. in in this country or yeah, in this look city or whatever, and, and we, we don't want to look at, it. we don't have to, because that net is like a monument to our failings to these people who yeah. have this you know issue and in their I, lives I that we're not addressing. I don't remember the number, but they have since installed the net. Yeah. And suicides have dropped. Dro- like plummeted. Crazy. Plummeted. Which I mean, is, it was like it was I mean, like no an 80% drop. On that one. I'm oh, sorry. God. That's a, no. <laughs> not acceptable. No. <laughs> um, but no, but like it has dropped like crazy. And so really, guess how many we could have saved if 80 years ago. Exactly. We yeah, if we would you have done I mean? it. Well, and that was the thing is they had those nets there when they were constructing it, you know, <laughs> to sa- save people yeah. from falling. They were there. Yeah. But yeah. it, it just shows, I, I think that part, especially in the time we're in right now, is like, we don't want to look at the, 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 the ugly part, you we know, don't. I, w- I want to hide that away. But this could save, you know, X amount. Yeah, but then I have to think that, you know, a bridge is also a vehicle for, you know, uh, people taking their lives. And then I have to think about that a little bit more. And, or, or maybe if I don't see it, like the first time, I don't have to think about it. But the more I see it, the more I have to think about it. And then I have to go into the idea like, hey, some of these systems are failing us. You know, like yeah. there are people who are living on the edge or living with depression that I want to think that, you know, everything's happy all the time because I'm happy. Yeah. And, and I don't want to see this. And how many other, you know, Golden Gate Bridges do we have in our lives right now where yeah. the net is there? We can afford to put the net there, but the net reminds us that we have issues that we haven't yeah. dealt with. You know yeah. what I mean? Even though the net will will make those issues better, yeah, we just cannot stomach the fact of talking about it. And, and it's hilarious, you know, like 
uh, I'm thinking of a few episodes, you know, we're talking about social safety nets, you know, yeah. it's, it's a good metaphor for it. That's a great, you know, linguistically, like that's a great name for it. You know, there, there are well, people who are falling and <laughs> that we, we would rather the net not be there. You and I accidentally agreed that we would like UBI. Yeah, yeah. And both of us not really liking it going no, into it. No. Ended up discussing it and uh, kind of liking it. And over the last yeah. few weeks, I've become a little maybe too impassioned on this idea. You're on, on the UBI. gang gang now. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm crafting arguments on why it's a good idea now. I, I, I mean, spend time yeah. doing this. And, hey, but, man, it, it came from Republicans. I'll, but do I'll you know concede what UBI, that. Do you know what I have to admit when I mm-hmm. say UBI? Yeah. I have to I have to say, hey, capitalism in its rawest, uncontrolled form is not gonna work. No. It's not working. And we decided and that as, in the twenties. We yeah, decided that in the thirties. But as a conservative that's really a conservative that has been brought up in the idea that I can have whatever future I want and I build yeah. my wealth and I you know, I'm a, I'm a white guy in America and I've got all the tools necessary and I can win. Yeah. Now because I've been brought up with that, it's very hard for me to stomach admitting that, hey, guess what? In this country, there's not just a bunch of white guys with all the tools like me. Yeah. And so maybe we need something in place yeah. to help out. And it makes me have to think about it. You yeah. know what I mean? Every time we talk about it. And I've got to stomach that. And honestly, it's not that right. different than the bridge. It's not that no, different than putting not. that up. That's what I mean. It's like it's, it, it was very... I don't think he put it in there to be metaphorical, but like yeah. in the situation we're in, like you can look at that. And if you think, Hey man, if I just follow the right stuff or if I just, you know, change the stuff that I'm looking at or listening to, or if I bury my head in the sand then I don't have to think about it and it goes away. No, the problem's still there. You know, the people yeah. are still jumping and still falling and we've got to either say to ourselves like, Hey, I see that happening and I want to build the net or, and it's so blatant like there's the other side is i see that happening and i'm just yeah gonna forget well, and, about it and you know and if you're looking at the bridge too like mm-hmm. you know the argument was let's invest that money in helping people you know let, let's try to get them before they get to the bridge which is yeah. totally knowable yeah I mean, I mean you're gonna win my support anytime you make an argument like that i'm like yeah, yeah let's head off the problem before it is a buddy of mine's reading a book called upstream right now which i think we should read as well okay have you read that one no it's uh anyway. I'm it's reading. Just, I'm reading. Talking with zombies right now. It's uh, okay. It, I don't know if it's it'll. I don't know. It'll, it's, it'll it's, make the podcast. It's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I'll the, see how this it one, <laughs> the way he explained it to me, and I've not read it yet, but it looks really interesting. It's a business book. It's not. Uh, anyway, but it, it's the idea of when you're downstream, mm-hmm. receiving a problem <laughs> and like trying to fix it. There's yeah. probably an issue upstream, and so you should go upstream and try to fix that problem. That way, you don't right. have a downstream. And that's what that argument is. And it totally relates with me. Like that's exactly how I'd want to fix a problem. So I understand the not in putting in the nets. Cause I'd be like, well, if we put it in the nets, you know, why don't we just catch them beforehand? But this is the thing. Yeah. Why don't we do both? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's always the people downstream that are complaining that the people upstream usually are like, what are you complaining about? Yeah. None of this is, we're not experiencing this. You're yeah. obviously, you know, just come upstream, you know? Yeah. As if it was that easy. The people who were born upstream were like, yeah, just come up here, man. It's, it's better up yeah. here. <laughs> you yeah. know, like yeah. there's always going to be someone downstream, you know, so yeah. we should always look for, and those people don't have the means to like, you know, uh, yeah, we're, we're going well, over a little bit but, here. But, but I'd like to say like right now in the situation we are in, Mm-hmm. Uh, well, what's next? What, what what comes next after this? After this so this is of- the last part, and we'll kind of yeah. we'll kind of blow through it a little bit because I think it's a little bit easier to, yeah. to digest than like the coupling. The coupling you really have to think about that. But this is a very cut and dry experiment. Uh, the Kansas City experiments. Yep, that's right. you know mm-hmm. there was two of them. One of them happened in the seventies, I think, and then yep. the other in the eighties. I'm I'm wrong with the dates. I'll already say that. But they were well enough apart to where. Uh, crime was such an issue there that the, the, the police force was like, we're going to give all the brain power to this one person, have him come in and restructure us. We're ready to try anything. That's so that the first, first test, yeah. Yeah, so the first guy was like, let's just have this mentality for people that there's a cop around every corner that will we'll increase the, the police force like tenfold and just have cops everywhere. And so people will never feel safe to do crimes. Yep. And it failed utterly. Like the, cr- the crime rate, they spent so much money and the crime rate stayed the same. Yeah. And so no we turned the, pa- yeah. So we 
we turn the page and, you know, that's a bloated uh, uh, budget there for, for something that's completely ineffective. And yeah. then you bring in this other guy and I, I think I have his name. I'll probably run around it later, but uh, uh, he, he actually talks a little bit with a couple of guy too. Uh, uh, the, well, Cause what he, figured out, what he figures out is uh, this, the second guy, he brings in policing and it, his mm-hmm. past research was looking at uh, specifically in New York city, I believe, prostitutes in new york city that's this guy so, right? there was a block yeah and it was yeah. just a single block and the the idea is always like not a whole street just a section no. of a street yeah and there the theory is that that crime is just going to move down the corner if you focus yeah. too heavily on one spot on one area but what he found was that prostitution went down completely like it, it yeah. was gone like the people the sex they weren't workers, moving they weren't moving to another block no and when asked about it yeah you know all yeah. different kinds of responses like those aren't my uh, those aren't my kind of girls over there. I don't want to work with those prostitutes yeah. over there. Or I don't or, know them. I might be in danger. Or my kids go to the school here. I don't want to move them out. Yeah. yeah. Or I don't want to move. I, you know, I don't know the customers over there. The customers I get probably wouldn't be like my customers. I don't want to yeah. go. Um, or even like, uh, well, that's there's a lot more drug crime over there. And I feel mm-hmm. like if I go in and move in on that, I could I could end up hurt because of yeah. like I could end up killed yeah. because of what's going on. So, so they really, found different professions. Like they got, yeah, they chose to do other things. Yeah, it <laughs> pushed them forward to do something different. And because moving was more traumatic for them and something they didn't want to. It turns out, even prostitutes hate moving. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like that was his realization. Well, was like, all oh, do. this is like yeah. everyone. Yeah. yeah, everyone. That's just the human spirit. Like I, yeah. I'm, I've set my roots, roots here. This it's going to take me a while to put them somewhere else. I'll just. I'll suffer with what I have to suffer here, try to make it a little bit better. Yeah. And, you know, it's, so yeah. he applies that to the second round. They crime was still, they're so ready to do something else. So they bring yeah. another guy in same, same prerequisites is you do whatever you want to just tell us what to do. We'll do it. So he said be hyper aggressive in these, um, these hot spots for crime. Like, I think they did a patrol from like 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. every night. And like yep. the arrest rate just, they did more in the 200 days of this trial than some cops before them had done in their entire lives. Entire careers, like, yeah. Entire careers. Well, and, and, so and, what... and crime plummeted. Mm-hmm. So what the issue was, like, go away, like, great, we found a great new tactic. But the issue was that uh, there were a lot of uh, departments calling this guy, hey, come train our guys, do this. Mm-hmm. Like it was such a... Uh, a roaring success that these people did this. But it seems like the issue now is that we're putting both these experiments together and yep. trying to say that it works. When, when yep. I think he brings up the North Carolina State Highway Patrol saying that they went from like 200,000 to 400,000. No, 400,000 to 800,000. Oh gosh, yeah. I yep. mean, and over and, the course of seven years. That, so that's we're going to spread right. out super far and we're going to be hyper aggressive. Yep. And it's guys, that's not what we said. That's not, or what, that's not said. what the experiment said. Yeah. It was be hyper aggressive in these places in with high crimes. Yeah. yeah. Isolate and, the problem and, and attack so, it. And so this is really out of Kansas city is where we get modern day policing. Yeah. And yeah. this idea, and really one of the ideas that they tackled was um, right now we normally, for the most part, we respond to crime. So someone mm-hmm. calls us in, a crime is happening, and we go and respond to it. Something's happening, and we respond to it. Mm-hmm. How could we get crime beforehand? And it's not a bad thought. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, right. that's not a bad thought. I think that's a good thought. But so what they realized was if we have probable cause, we can investigate further. And so if they just put themselves in a situation yeah. where a taillight was out on a car, stop that car. Well, they, they, stop they there. They lanes was, without that, using a signal. That oh was the point that he tried to make was that, um, so a cop stops this guy who had a, one broken tail light and yep. another one that was working. So the cop stopped him saying that he had a broken tail light and gave him a ticket. Yep. So the guy appealed that because North Carolina state law was that at the time was that if you have one working tail light, you're yep. legal. Yeah. Yeah. So he appealed it and the judge ruled for the cop saying that the cop believed that the law was a broken tail yep. light gets you a citation. So yep. it's not just necessarily like, probable cause of the law it's probable yeah. cause of these you know guys who don't know the yeah. law you but know and i'm not saying that all the guys got. don't know the law but it was like that one instance just showed us but kind of it was through this this style of policing was focusing on how many traffic stops can we get 
yeah. run, if we run the traffic stop number up, mm -hmm. and honestly, Kansas City, what that second test proved, if we run traffic stops up in these areas, we can pull more guns that are illegally on and the street off, and it yeah. worked. It was absolutely but it, successful. It, but it also showed, like, there. I think uh, the, 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 I don't know, the, whatever profession he was in, but the guy doing the, the research on it yeah. was talking with, with the cops and, and you know, they, the finding a gun was a point of pride. Like it, yeah. it gave you opportunities to move up. Oh, I want to get a gun today. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, man, I hadn't got one all week. I'm this is my night, you know, I'm going to yeah. find one. And it, it just reinforces this like hyper aggressive escalating situations where like, I've got, I've got to find a cause to find a gun. Yep. And, and that's, you know, that's what uh, he's saying in this book here. Yeah. And this is not where profiling began in police no, work. That no, started no, no. long ago. But yeah. profiling was applied to this yeah. only as a measure of how aggressive are you when you walk up. So yeah. the, the key on this, because they even did the trainings, like mm -hmm. how do you make sure that people don't think we're racially profiling? Stop everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Pull everybody. Was, yeah. Up. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? And so that's but what they were doing. It's, it's, it, we kind of talked about this uh, a little bit before was like, you know, it, this is kind of like a lukewarm road to take, you know, yeah. either, either say that there are parts of your city that has heightened yeah. crime and isolate there and, and, and do the good policing there or <laughs> try the other way and be like a, the failed experiment that yeah. just have cops everywhere, you know, yeah. but like, yeah. don't be in the middle of these two experiments and, and yeah. try to do two things, do one or the other yeah. and, and you'll find good results. And, and again, like this is the thing with experiments is like it worked in Kansas city, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work everywhere. You yeah. know? Yeah. But that's, but that's so police officers that have joined the force in the last 20, 30 years, yeah. have been thought, taught with this idea of being hyper aggressive during traffic. It happens to me. I drive a shady truck. I got that slow yeah. beat up shady truck. I get stopped yeah. often in it. Um, and I'll get stopped and they'll ask me question after question. Oh, where are you going to? They're asking me questions that seem for me. I was like, why did you stop me? You know, mm -hmm. I failed the signal. What, what happened here? You know what I mean? Like just really off, off target questions. What they're trying to do is, is get me to talk long enough to expose something that's wrong. Right. You know, yeah. Where do Look I have something. the meth hidden? You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. that's what they're trying to figure out. Where well, is the you illegal know, gun yeah. at? And yeah. so that's the that that's those policing methods mm -hmm. that we've been using and we've put in place everywhere. And we've and trained that, cops in that. Yeah. And I think um and we're gonna talk more about it next week. Well, that's what I was gonna say um, is is this is the this is the point he directly leads from that, you know, that yeah. correlation that we put these two experiments together into our current policing. And then he says, everything that happened with Sandra Bland happened because she was pulled over outside of a university because she yep. failed to signal when yep. the cop like was behind her. Yep. And she thought, oh, he's going, he rushed up behind me. I'm going to go get on the side of the lane so he can go around me. But she failed to signal. Yep. And so that's when all this stuff happened. So it's yep. like, okay, let's, so let's he, talk about it he now. Caused, yeah. And we will talk about this next week. He caused yep. the infraction. And then, and he would admit to that. Yeah. He caused the infraction. And then, oh no, that's all in the deposition. Like, yeah, we're that not, was. We're not making like. Yeah, uh, that was his point. He was trying. He was trained to do opinions that. here. You yeah, can, you can force an infraction and then pull them over. Well, that's yeah, true. that's how he took it. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's. I don't know. Yeah, but we're we're going to talk more about that next week. Yeah, and that's a uh, that's definitely current with our our current situation, right? Yep. Um, that's where we are and what we're discussing and. Yeah. Um, so we're excited to talk about that and uh, put some legs. Well, not it. excited. I'm not excited. Not really. I'm not excited <laughs> that we have to talk about I, it. I, yeah, this, this, this stuff is just like, okay. Like, I, I don't know why, but like YouTube, I guess with algorithm, what's, what's trending and stuff. I'm getting, I'm getting stuff from like 2016, 2012 yeah. and 10 of the same conversation that keeps happening. And it's like, yeah. why can we not address this? Like this is a glaring yeah. number of people jumping off the bridge and we need a net like it's finally yeah. time to do that like yeah. i don't care if it makes you feel uncomfortable it's time to like yeah. do something about it yeah and I, just i don't know like I, and, I, I, there's still and, arguments to like not have the net you know and, and i just people, people what, are you, are what are you guys out, looking at yeah i don't think we have a great idea for a net yet but people no. are throwing idea, uh, ideas now i mean you're starting yeah. to see them come out yeah and i'm going to encourage people and we'll talk about it more next week i'm going to yeah. encourage people do not crucify an idea yet. 
Yeah, exactly. Let people throw them out and let them stick to walls and let's yeah. throw them all out. Don't say, say, that's an idea. I yeah. mean, you know what I mean? Don't say, oh, that's horrible. That would never work because of this. And you're stealing my freedoms and you're stealing it. Nope. Just let the ideas come out. Yeah. And let's and don't figure out take, what this net's going to look like. Don't take like insults to the system be taken as personal insults to people yeah. that are in them. Like, let's just step back and start talking yes. because at the end of the day, like this country, we're all in the same boat. I, yeah. I know we made the metaphor before. It's like, you know, with the COVID stuff, we're not all in the same boat. In yeah. this system, we're all in the same yeah. boat. We all yeah. have to share the same streets. Yeah. It's time to listen to one another. Yeah. And, 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 and especially those who have gone unheard for so long, it's time to just, just shut up and listen. Like, I, yeah. I think that's the best thing. Yeah. A lot of these people who have, or even me, you know, like that have, assume this is how the world is well that's not how it is for 10 percent of the population okay well then i'm going to step back and Educate shut me. up yeah and give you the microphone hey you let, take it away from here let me help help build something that's going to help you yeah you exactly. know i mean not, not i'm not even not me not all of us let me no. help something that's going to help you your yeah. you know that 10 percent or 12 percent that's affected by this let's help yeah you. yeah exactly cool we'll talk about that next week <laughs> yep <laughs> We'll have all of the answers and a plan that can be put into place. Uh, 40 day plan, 40 step, 40 day plan. 40 step. That that's, sounds like Michael Scott. Is that that's, Scott? That, that is a rip from Michael Scott. Yeah. No. Like, I had to end it. Well, I should end it on a light note, but like, I mean, I, yeah, that's just that's how okay. I am. Yeah. I laugh in but this. Just guys, to get away we, from we it. We are, uh, uh, Curtis and I are having a, a small battle with uh, Facebook ads. And what we're allowed to advertise. Uh, so if you could, we would love it if you shared this post uh, with people, um, let people knew, know what we're doing out there and that they could jump in the conversation with us. Um, we've enjoyed uh, interacting with some of you. Had someone reach out to me this week even that's like, hey, I listen all the time. I just never comment. I never reach out and tell you, but yeah. uh, I just want you to know I listen all the time. And that's great. That's I'm, I'm glad that we have yeah. people. Um, well, and I've heard from a few people that like show the people that they're trying to have a conversation with. Yeah. And like, yep. again, we, we're not the moral authority on anything. Yep. We, yeah. we are learning every day. But the whole point is that it's okay to talk to people who disagree with you. And it's okay to be friends with people who yeah. you disagree with. Me and Luke text all the time. And it's yep. way more heated than here. Like, oh, it, gets, it gets heated. Yeah. And, but like at the end of the day, we come together and we're like, hey, we're friends, you know, I appreciate you. We've, we've shared yeah. a lot of experiences together and, and you don't have to do that with everyone you disagree with. You don't have to be best friends with, you know, the most yeah. reprehensible person you've seen on the street, but realizing that we're all people and do better as a collective, like we're only the we're only as good as the worst among us, you know, yeah. or we're only as, as, as rich as the poorest among us. So yeah. like, let's, let's, let's do some Samaritan good Samaritan work. Here, yeah. You know? absolutely. Like, geez. Absolutely. So thank you for joining in the conversation with us being a part of this. Um, we're obviously on YouTube, um, yep. everywhere podcasts are. Um, yep. yeah. So thanks for joining us. I guess we'll see you next, next week. week. Also, uh, Sylvia Plath, um, she ended her life early as, uh, as a poet, but she is very talented. Oh, if yeah. you've never read any of her, um, yeah. check that out. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. So it really is to read. All right. See you guys. Soon. See you.